Welcome to another message from Discover the Word Missionary Baptist Church and discovertheword.com. And we uh, appreciate your taking time to watch our videos and listen to our classes all over the world. We hope that we're making a difference in your lives. We're in the 17th chapter and verse number 30 of the book of Acts. We are studying uh, the book of Acts from the Greek language. This is Greek reading and research. But it's more Bible study than it is anything. We're learning Greek as you go, and I will tell you this also. And I know that you will agree out there that have done this. If you study my classes at least once or twice a week, the, the Greek and uh, Hebrew reading classes, especially the Greek, within three years you'll be able to take up your Greek Bible in a linear and be able to read the Greek out of it and not really understand how it all happened. Because you've been... Uh, introduced it by, introduced to, it's been introduced to you by induction. In other words, you're learned by doing it. A guy can learn how to dig a ditch really well if you just get out there and dig a ditch. You can learn how to uh, do almost anything. You can learn how to drive a nail by driving a nail. You can learn how to saw off a piece of wood by sawing wood. You can do all of these things by learning by doing, and that's what we're doing here. Now, I want to go backwards just a little bit and give you a little bit of, uh, of what Paul's talking about here. He's, on, he's in Athens at this time. He's going to go to Corinth later in this message. But he's, in, he's up on Mars Hill. And up here, our little sign, a blue sign with red, white letters there, uh, says Areopagus. Areopagus means uh, Mars Hill. And it was a court. It was a court in, in, uh, in this ancient city of Athens where uh, they would go up and question people. And they had a certain amount of judges that were appointed for life. And, and, and they were appointed for life unless they did some type of crime where they lost their judgeship. Well, they would judge a person. Uh, sometimes they would judge civil matters and religious matters and uh, even international matters. Now, let's go back and read this a little bit. And then we'll get up where we're going. Some also of the Epicureans and of the Stoic philosophies, and we understood what each and every one of those meant as we studied this, this uh, former class. Philosophers encountered him and began to to engage in discussion, and some said, what is this uh, babbler? And with this uh, scrap-picked learning, this uh, heretical learning that he's got, trying to say, and others say, uh, he seems to be an announcer of foreign deities, of foreign gods, because he preached Jesus and the resurrection, and it is Asus and Anastasia. And so... Uh, Asus is masculine and Anastasia is feminine, so they thought he was talking about uh, Jesus, a, another unknown God, and Anastasia, his wife. And Paul tries to shrug that off and tell him, no, I'm not talking about a deity here, I'm talking about the creator God of heaven and the earth. And he took hold, and they took hold of him, and they brought him to Areopagus, Mars Hill, an auditorium and a courtroom, saying, may we know what this novel and unheard of and unprecedented teaching is which you are openly declaring. For you set forth some startling things, foreign and strange to our ears, and we wish to know, therefore, what, just what these things mean that you're talking about. For the Athenians, all of them, and foreign residents and visitors among them, spent all their leisure time in nothing except telling or hearing something that they had never heard before, something new. The latest fad, the latest learning, the latest idea, the latest philosophy. So Paul, standing in the center of Areopagus Mars Hill Auditorium, said, Men of Athens. I perceive that in every way, on every hand, and in every direction that I turn uh, and that I make, that you are a most religious, uh, what actually superstitious people. You are in fear of gods. 
Now, what the uh, Epicureans said, that they did not fear any future judgment, they did not fear anything that happened around them, and especially not any deity. He said that you're a very superstitious people. You're very reverent to demons. For I passed along carefully observing your objects of worship. I came also upon an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Now, what you are already worshiping as unknown, I set forth to you. Every man that we know when we studied systematic theology, and we did almost 200 classes of that, didn't we? The first thing God revealed to man is he revealed you through himself to you through his what? Nature. His creation. Mm -hmm. That he made this world. The secondarily, he, he reveals himself to your conscience by intuition. Number three, by specific and special revelation. And number four, and finally, through his son, and then through his final word. The God whom, who produced and formed the world and all things that are in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in handmade buildings and shrines. Neither is he served by human hands, as though he lacked anything. For it is he himself who gives life and breath and all the things to all people. And he's quoting Isaiah 42, verse 5. And he made from one common origin, one source of one blood, Adam's blood, all nations of men to settle on the face of the earth, having definitely and determined their allotted periods of time and the fixed boundaries of their habitations, their settlements, lands, and abodes. Verse number 27 now, and so that they should seek God in the hope that he might feel they might feel after him find him, although he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live, we move, and we have our existence, our being, even some of your own poets. And he's quoting famous poets. They knew exactly the words that he was quoting from the poets. For we are also his offspring. We are also his sons. We are also his heirs. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to suppose that deity, the Godhead, is like gold or silver or stone. We are made in the image of God, and you have made him in the image of stones and wood and gold and silver. That is, God's nature and a representation of human art and imagination or anything constructed or invented by a man's hands. Now, here is where we are going to begin for... Such former ages of ignorance, God, it is true, ignored and allowed to pass unnoticed. But now he charges all people everywhere to repent. And that is to change their minds for the better and heartily to amend their ways with abhorrence for their past sins. Because he has fixed a day when he will judge the world righteously, justly, by the man whom he has destined and appointed for that task, and he has made this credible and given conviction and assurance and evidence to everyone by raising him from the dead. Now, God tells these people that God is going to judge you. That in times past he overlooked you he overlooked your ignorance, but now you're not going to be ignorant anymore. God judges mankind by what light they have, doesn't he? Well, the more light you have, the more judgment you got. That means we're under the spotlight for sure. He told them that, that in times past that Israel was the banner of God's truth. And behind me up here, you see a history chart. 
in this history chart, you see how God called out his churches, and he called out men to be fishers of men. Now, in the next few verses, we're going to learn, we're going to learn the names of some very important people in history. The one speaking here is the Apostle Paul. He's speaking to the Athenians there and that great, below that great Parthenon there that, and, and on Mars Hill. He's speaking to very, what we might call the intellectual elite of his time. The intellectual elite. But the intellectual elite were, had been brainwashed by Greek mythology. All of them had been taught to fear and worship all kinds of gods and isms. They had been educated, but they had been educated from the wrong angle. Today in America we have a problem with unity. We have a problem with unity. We have a problem with uh, transparency. We have all of these problems that are very real to us now, or at least part of our people. We have radicals, very radical people. Sometimes we have the right, radical right, we have the radical left. The radical, very radical left is in power right now. And many people believe that they stole that power. They got what they got by theft. Right or wrong, one side is calling the others now that you're ignorant, they're uneducated, that they need to be reprogrammed. We look back in history at times like this and we see Hitler, Mao Tse Tung. We see South America, we see all of the republics and what were regimes down in those areas, and they reprogrammed their thinking. That is a very dangerous thing when they say that you cannot think what you want to think. Democracy is founded on freedom of speech and freedom of thought. You may be wrong in what you believe, but you ought to be free to believe it. As simple as that. Now the Apostle Paul tells these people here, you're wrong in what you believe. What you've been taught up to this time, but now God is calling you to repentance and he's calling to you and I'm going to prove this to you, he says. How did Paul prove that his message was valid? How did he prove his message was valid? By great miracles. Paul raised the dead, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Paul and the other apostles healed the sick. They did things that were supernatural, beyond the natural world. We look in some of these cities and they have great schools of medicine. And I'm going to tell you this, that the... the the school of medicine that, uh, that they had up until uh, 1900, the Greek philosophy of medicine was incorrect. The old song, Earth, Wind, and Fire, basically comes from the balance of, of uh, blood and bile and everything in your, lie, in your body, and they used to bleed people. A doctor was also a barber with sharp razors and leeches and scalpels to bleed you and get rid of that bad blood. It killed President George Washington. Bad medicine. Paul is not teaching them bad medicine now. He's teaching them correctly. But it is their... Now this... <clears throat> our idea in the Western world was set forth from this and of course the American Indian culture. The phrase in the, in the, the preamble of the Constitution, we the people, 
came from the Iroquois Confession and Confederation of Faith and Democracy. But in the world, democracy was introduced by the Greek philosophers, Alexander the Great, and Rome. And this is where this democracy came from. So Paul said, I, you, you walked around in ignorance, groping after God, but now I call you to repentance to the real God that created the heavens and the earth. Not a God that you can make with your hands, but the real God, the one that really, really gives you breath and life. In him we move and breathe and have our existence. That's what each and every contestant went by when they went by to the statue of Zeus. They said, in him we live, we move, and have our existence. Well, Paul said, you ignorantly said this, but I tell you the truth. In him we live and move and we have our existence. Verse number 31 now from the Greek language. Kathoti, estason, hemeron, and he mele. Krine, tain, oike, menein, and dekaiosune, and andre, ho, orisane, pisa, piston, pasa, cone, pasin, anasasas, auton, ek, necro. Now here's something they didn't want to accept. Because he said a day in which he is about to judge the inhabited earth. And he's going to judge it in righteousness. Judge it in righteousness. Oh, how we pray for righteous judgment in our courts, don't we? How we pray. We see criminals set free. We see people that have turned the nation upside down with barely a slap on the wrist. We pray, we beg, we cry for justice. But it says God is going to judge the inhabited earth. In a man to whom he designated and marked off and guaranteed faith, having offered to all and having raised him up out of the dead ones, and he's talking about Jesus Christ, isn't he? Galatians, the fourth chapter, says, <clears throat> In the fullness of time, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law the laws of nature, that he might redeem those that were under the curse of the law. And Paul is preaching this message to them that he preached, that he's going to preach to the Galatian Christians. Having raised them up out of the dead ones. Verse number 32, Akusantes, de Anastasin, Necron, Hoi, Man, Ek, Leo zon, hoi de apon, akuso metha, si, peri tuto kai palin. And having heard about the resurrection out of the dead ones, these indeed kept on scoffing. That word there is a cleo zone. Cleo zone. It means to. Uh, ridicule. It means to ridicule and to scoff. And these ones said, we shall hear of you concerning also again. We're going to, we'll listen to you again some other time. Verse number 33, Hutos, Hopalos, Exel, Thane, Ek, Mesu, Alton. In this very same manner, Paul, he went forth out of the midst of them. He left. He said, you don't want to hear me? You don't have to hear me. The next voice you'll hear is God. Verse number 34. Tines de Andres Kale Thentes Alto Epis Tucson En Hois Kai Dionusios Ho Are Pagites Kai gene onomate demarius. Kai eteroi sin autos. But some of the men, having adhered to his words, they uh, 
They believed. They believed. And among these was Dionysios, Dionysios, the Areopagite. Areopagite. That means the one that, that he lived there on Mount Areopagus. And then a woman by the name of Demarius and others with him. They all believed. Now let's go back and read this from the Amplified Bible and we'll get a couple of verses out of the next chapter here to get us a foothold in that one. Verses 31, and, and because he has fixed a day when he shall judge the world righteously and justly by a man whom he has de destined and, and appointed to that task, Galatians 4, Galatians chapter 4. And he has made this credible and given conviction and assurance and evidence to everyone by raising him out of the dead one. God raised Jesus out of the dead, mm -hmm. didn't he? Paul by the Holy Spirit, by the agent of the Holy Spirit, Peter by the agents of the Holy Spirit, Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit, all of these raised others from the dead and the diseases fell away. But now God himself raised Jesus out of the dead. Jesus said, if you crucify me, if you kill me, and bury me in three days I'll raise this body up. He said also that the eternal spirit would raise him from the dead and it also said the Father would raise him from the dead because we have the whole triune God empowering and doing this task. Psalm 9 and verse 8, 96, 13 and 98 and verse 9 are quotes from Paul's speech here. Now when they had heard this there had been a resurrection from the dead. Some scoffed. But others said, we will hear you again about this matter. We want to hear you again. So Paul went out from the midst of them. But some of the men were on his side and joined with him and believed and became Christians. Among them were Dionysius, a judge of the Areopagus. This man was of the court that was judging Paul right here, one of the judges began to follow him. Wouldn't that be wonderful in this land if we had judges that would begin to follow Jesus this day? Wouldn't that be wonderful? Well, this man, one of the judges, judges of Areopagus, followed Paul. And a woman named Demarius and some others with him. Now, we'll begin our journey in the 18th chapter. Paul at Corinth. Now Paul goes from Athens to Corinth. And we could start a whole different message from this one, actually. I think we'll do that because we will, might may spend too much time on the 18th chapter there just getting acquainted with Corinth at that time. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Father, we thank you for this, your word. We thank you for this lesson that, you, that we received from you of the great message to mankind. Father, I, I just pray that that the world will hear these words, that people will be saved and will learn to trust you. And I pray for all of those that we had in our prayer request here in our little church today. Father, please touch every life and every subject that we prayed about for your eternal purpose and in your will. And Father, please forgive me where I fail you. In Jesus' name.